Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's so good to see every one of you here. It's always a highlight of my week to be with you and um, <laughs> thankful for Zoom. Um, you know, we, we make jokes about it and stuff, but it it has really enabled us to stay connected, and I'm, I'm always grateful for that. So welcome to worship. Um, we're always trying to be um, current, and we're always trying to be authentic in our worship as it relates to the world. Today's service takes place as the planet Earth convulses, spasms of sickness. We think of Arizona, where one minute people are fleeing and dying from fire. And then two or three days later, people are drowning because of flood. The earth is ill. The earth is out of balance. And human arrogance has caused it. <clears throat> Seeing no clear in the Enbridge Company and the work to try to put another pipeline in. But the earth is something else, too. <clears throat> it is a sacrament, a sign and reminder of God's presence and care for creation. But what can we do? How do we react? Thankful for Doug Hoyer's leadership and vision. Thankful for the vision and leadership of the Earth Angels, Marsha Lewis and her council. Thankful for the vision and prophetic word from our denomination that you'll hear more about in a little bit. Today's service moves in that direction of understanding Earth as sacrament and learning from her. I wonder if you ever think of earth itself as a church. I'd like to you to look at that picture and think of a cathedral. The planet earth is our church. And we mentioned sacrament. What is a sacrament? Here are two centering thoughts. One is by a theologian and the other from the Talmud. Both of them point to what sacrament means. Friends, today I, um, you're going to find that I have chosen a wide variety of music uh, in hopes of nurturing ourselves and also calling ourselves to action because music, as we all know, is a sacrament as well. So I say here at the beginning, may the service today speak truth and give us hope. We begin with J.S. Bach, Alamande. Thank you. 
And now let us join together in our call to worship. This call to worship is from one of our beloved Psalms. Let us responsibly call ourselves to worship. May God be gracious to us and bless us. May God's face shine upon us. That God's love may be known upon earth. God's saving love for all nations. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For God deals with the peoples with justice and guides the nations on the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. We now will continue to praise God with this piece. It is called, I Am That Great and Fiery Force. It was a poem or writing of Hildegard of Bingen, a mid, um, medieval um, mystic and Christian uh, and poet. I shine in glitter on the seas, in burning sun, in moon and stars, in unseen wind, in verdant trees, I breathe within both near and far. Spirit 
his breath The thundered word for I am Now, let us engage in our prayer of the day in a responsive reading. This is a writing from Henry David Thoreau, one surely of the great, great champions of planet Earth that has been produced by our country. Let us pray together. Lord of skies, you walk among us in the plain brown soil of Earth. How you've chosen to be present often seems of little word. You have chose common bushes, kindled them with heaven's fire, spoken through unlikely prophets, heralding your love's desire. Heaven is under our feet as well as over our heads. Amen. Let us now share in the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. The peace of Christ to all. We are now going to hear a amazing piece of music. It is entitled African Psalm. You can Google this group uh, and find out more about them. They move around and sing songs in different languages um, and they recruit local youth to do it wherever they are. Today, I'd like to just read you briefly the main part of the words that, uh, that go to this song. Lift your voices, all ye people. Praise the Lord, singing Alleluia. Everybody sing together. Praise the Lord, singing Alleluia. Lift your voices to praise God. All creation sing together. Alleluia. I know you'll enjoy this as much as I have.
Hallelujah. Well, I'd like to be in the room with that group, wouldn't you? That was amazing. I love that. Our scripture today is from the book of Revelation. Revelation has kind of a bad reputation among some of us, being kind of weird, but it's actually one of the most beautiful and profoundly moving books in our Bible. 21st chapter, selected verses. It is a vision of what will be, God's vision of what will be. I saw no temple in the city, for the temple is the Lord God, the Almighty. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God is its light, and its light is the Lamb. The nations will walk by this light, and the monarchs of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. Then the angel showed me the river of water, the river of the water of life. It was bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there in the city anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and God's servants will worship. They will see God's face and God's name will be on them and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign together forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this word that comes from your throne of grace and help us now grab hold of it and understand. We pray in your holy name. Amen. So I would say the theme for the day is, is eschatological. Wait, what did he say? I, I thought I just heard the preacher say that the theme is this cat is logical. Well, one of you might say that obviously that preacher has never had a cat, <laughs> for one thing. Or maybe he's talking like a hippie. You, you remember, oh, baby, that cat can play the guitar. Yeah, and since this ser is a sermon and he's talking about Jesus, right? But that's not right. I mean, you can say a lot of things about Jesus, but logical is not one of them. If you want to be first in line, get to the back. You want to save your life? Lose it. So, Gwen, why are you talking about logical cats? I love this congregation and the permission you give me to be playful and have fun. So what I said was eschatological. What is eschatology? The word comes from two Greek words. Eschaton, which means last things, and logos, which are words or thinking or thoughts. So thoughts and thinking about last things. But what does that mean? What does last things mean? This is referring to the completion of God's plan, of God's hope, of God's dream for the creation that God breathed life into. You remember the wonderful hymn, Finish now thy new creation. Lost in wonder, love, and praise is how that hymn put it. Does that mean that we have to wait for some far off time to live in God's dreams? No, it's actually the whole point of the book of Revelation. We don't have to wait until the very end to experience completion of God's plan. 
For all along the way, there are signs and glimpses of the perfect and whole universe that is God's intention. And these signs and glimpses are called sacraments. Sacraments are signs and glimpses of the perfect and whole creation that God intends. For example, here's an eschatological story. The Great Columbia River is 1,243 miles long. Maybe some of you have been along that amazing river. It begins in the Canadian Rockies and finally empties in the Pacific Ocean. It forms the border between Oregon and Washington, and that river is famous, world famous, for its salmon. But in 2000, the year 2000, the salmon were in trouble. Unbridled logging and damming of the river, mining operations had reduced the annual run of salmon from an estimated 16 million to about 700,000. The New York Times sent one of its trusted reporters, Jim Robbins, to do an article on the situation. And what Robbins found was that the Roman Catholic Church had authored a bioregional pastoral letter stating that all, all of the world is sacred and that, quote, the life-creating, sustaining, and redeeming presence of the divine is throughout and intertwined with all of creation. That is to say, all of creation itself is a sacrament. The archbishop of the local church took the reporter to the baptismal font in their huge cathedral to make his point. He said, the priest said, we don't baptize people with dead water, but water that is alive, moving Fresh water, crystal clear, the waters of baptism are the waters of our salvation and are the waters of the salvation for the salmon, too. Robbins named his article that appeared in the New York Times, Saving Souls and Saving Salmon. One of the most famous eschatological texts is the one that we read this morning. In imagery that soars beyond poetry, the visionary John of Patmos sees God's dream for all of us, God's plan. That churches and temples won't be necessary. Why? Because all of life will be worship and sacred and holy. The sun and the moon won't be necessary because all of life will provide the light and the the shining of the holy. And the Columbia River and the Mississippi River will be bright as crystal, God says. And the waters of northern Minnesota will be saved and safe. And the salmon and the smallmouth bass and the walleye will be saved. And in all the cities, there will be abundant food, food without price, the scripture says. There will be no more hunger. And the leaves of the trees, eucalyptus, let us imagine, will heal all of the nations. And finally, there will be peace. What do we mean by last things? They are the way things should be. They are the way things will be. And when Jesus teaches us to pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it already is in heaven, he is teaching us to think eschatologically. At Apostles, we have an Apostles group named Earth Angels. They make it their business and have for many years their ministry to advocate for the earth, to care for the earth, both the earth here on our property and the earth that's out there and in need of our help. And while Marcia and that group may not have had thought of it this way, of the work they do, 
as being eschatological. That is exactly what it is. Doug Hoyer is part of a people, a group of people protesting and getting arrested and singing and marching to stop line three. That evil snake of oil of Enbridge, which will sicken our beloved land and the holy places for Earth's native peoples. Last week, Winona LaDuc, the head of Honor the Earth and the leader of this movement to stop Line 3, was arrested. And I want you to hear now from her directly. And as you listen, I want you to be aware this is what eschatological speaking sounds like. It's not some high polluting, disconnected language in the Bible. This is eschatological language. Some breaking news out of Pennington County, Minnesota, on this Thursday evening at uh, 5.30 p.m. We've got another standoff with uh, protesters going on, just hearing radio traffic of uh, uh, law enforcement there calling in officers from other counties. This is video from yesterday. We had at least a couple people, maybe more arrested, uh, still waiting to get word on how all that worked out. Uh, but again, on this Thursday evening, another protest going on here. Uh, meanwhile, Winona LaDuke uh, just got out of uh, jail on this Thursday afternoon and made this statement. Uh, I mean it's Winona LaDuke, and I want to say that I've been released from jail my three nights uh, for being a water protector. I think this is what you call the Embridge Way. Make sure that hundreds of Minnesota citizens are put in jail so that they can steal five billion gallons of water and put the last tar sands pipeline in while they put a bunch of us in jail. But I'm uh, having spent three, three nights for being a water protector and uh, standing on the easement with six other women who are sitting on the easement. Um, you know, I want to say we're going to keep fighting Enbridge because it's wrong that they steal the water. It's not patriotic, Governor Walz, to give the water, the land, and our civil rights to a Canadian multinational. And I'm uh, really grateful to be out of jail today in Aiken County and uh, hope I don't see the inside for a little while, but who knows. I'm told by an Honor the Earth media relations person that uh, LaDuke had to pay a $6,000 bail to get out of jail and was held uh, longer uh, because of uh, pending citations from other protests. That was eschatological speaking. Five billion gallons of the water that God has made holy sacrificed to produce and deliver oil. Apostles is a community seeking to change lives. That's what we say. We do justice. We work to transform our society, to help the poor, the oppressed, and the least of these. A huge, huge part of this work has to be to protect the earth, to heal the earth, through education and action. And while we may not think of it this exact way, Apostles is an eschatological church. And everywhere we turn, we see the sacrament of God's creation, God's earth. I want to close this meditation with a call to action for the congregation. And a challenge, Can you think of it as some homework, with another sacrament, another sign of the last things of the king kingdom of earth that we all work towards. And the e-blast over the last few weeks has been an announcement regarding a wonderful event which our denomination has created. It is the annual Creation Care Conference. You can find lots of details in your e-blast about it but there will be great music inspired preaching and wonderful educational opportunities it will take place on saturday sundays three sundays the first the eighth and the 15th via zoom this first session goes from 4 30 to 6 that will include worship and preaching and then the second session is from 7 to 9 
And before I go further, I uh, here uh, at, at Apostles, we do have a commitment on the afternoon of August 8th, right? Everybody knows that's when we have the summer salon. So we will have to take a break for those of us who join up with this, uh, this amazing event to be a part of the salon. You can always uh, see what you missed later because it will be online. The purpose of the conference is not only to learn what your denomination is doing to be an apocalyptic, uh, a transformational uh, denomination, thinking and working on climate change. It also shows ourselves to be an eschatological people, determined to live as God's people, a people who know that the creator has in mind for us something much, much different than cheap, dirty oil, but rather a sacrament, earth as a sign of God's presence with us. God's care for us. I close with this. Peter Mayer, any of you ever heard that name? I don't see any nodding heads. He, uh, uh, Jerry Johnson knows who it is. It's, he is my favorite all-time musical artist. His work, every piece, is deeply theological, not to mention hauntingly poetic. There is a song he wrote that lives in my spirit. And I take it with me all of my days. I want to close with it now. Here is the poetry of the words before I play you the song. Church of the earth. The ceiling is high to let your soul rise up to the angels who teach you to fly. And when you're weary of being up there, it helps you back down and welcomes you home to this hallowed ground. It's gilded in gold, gilded in rust from heaven below and heaven above. The heaven we know here in this world, here in our holy church of the earth. The windows are wide, so darkness and light, mystery and beauty meet you inside. And there's room enough there to hold all of us who gather in friendship, gather in love. The heaven we know here in this world, the holy church of the earth. Church of life, ancient and bright. Life that inside us shines life that we share. This is our prayer that we may always find. The heaven we seek here at our feet. Our church of the earth. ceiling is high to let your soul rise up to the angels who teach you to fly and when you're weary of clouds Helps you back down and welcomes you home to this hallowed ground. It's gilded in gold, gilded in rust for heaven.
Thank you, Peter. How did you like that organ going on and that choir? Wasn't that cool? I love that. We come now to our joys and concerns. Okay, so let us um, conclude our prayer time, our Lord's Prayer. This prayer using the Aramaic to come up with this version. Let us pray together. O oh, birther, father, mother of the cosmos, you create all that moves in light. Carve a space for your name to live. Create your reign of unity now through our fiery hearts and willing hands. Let all wills move together in your vortex as stars and planets swirl through the sky. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight. Let each heartbeat release the weight of our mistakes and others' guilt. Let us not be deceived by false illusions, but free us from what holds us back. For from you comes the strength to act and the creative force in the universe that renews itself endlessly. Amen. And let us offer our prayers of blessing for um, and dedication for the gifts that we give to enable our church to have its ministry. Let us pray. Oh God, we dedicate our lives and all that we have to the work of life, of love, of peace. Receive our gifts and lead us in wisdom and courage. Amen. So how else would we end this service? but hearing from our native, beloved native siblings. I hope uh, this will inspire us as we leave here today. Granddaughter, the water can hear you. The water has memory. Life's blood of our mother, the earth. Water is the lifeblood of our own body. on the knowledge that needs to be given unto the other generations. You are the keeper of the water. life condition that we're in, that great-grandchildren will stand up to, to this truth of what life is about and, and to live it in such an honorable way, the way ancestors came, came to this earth.
each day when the sun rises, no matter how bad the day before might have been, there's a new chance for your hopes and dreams. And I say, Chi Miigwech, thank you for singing the water song. Go in peace, dear ones.